Okay, so as always, before we start anything at all, you really want to start off by reading the direction instead of seeing the entire thing. Break it down to pieces and read it to see if you have to understand what, you're, what they're asking you to do. For instance, for prompt six here, it says the volume V of a prism. So before you even progress, think about this. We're talking about volume. It's a prism. We know that a prism is not like a pyramid where it has a pointy top, right? Prism has identical top and bottom. Okay, so either one could be a base. We'll talk about the volume, we'll talk about the area, we'll talk about the perimeter for the past couple of days. Now, volume, as we can see, they actually describe it a bit more for you. So sometimes when you read the directions, it will describe what it really is. Kind of help you, or remind you at least, what the volume is, but it says this. The volume V of the prism equals the area of the base B times the height. So, in other words, when we talk about volume, if I hold this book up, for example, regular textbook, if you just look at it this way, you just see a surface of the book, right? I'm hiding the thickness of the book too. But when I start showing you the thickness of the book, there's the height of the book that you have to take into account. So, the, no, the height is not the same thing as the width, by the way. The thickness is different, okay? So let's think about this. The area of the surface is simply, in this case, a rectangular surface's area is length times width. We know that. But when I say the volume, you have to add on the thickness to that. And the thickness is the height of this book. So to calculate the entire volume of an object, it's in this case a prism, a rectangular prism, uh, you just take the area of the base, which is length times width, times it by the height of this book. Okay? Um, and that's what it's saying right here. The area of the base times height. Okay? Now if you look at this particular object right here, it is a rectangular prism. That's a big book. Okay. Why is it rectangular? Well, as you can see, the well, I know it looks kind of the sides are long. I know, it's not well, we just call it a rectangular prism. Um, so it has the, the base and it has the thickness or the height. The base is made up of the length and the width, right? We have is everything given to us? As far as the length, the width, the height. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so everything's given. So what you need to do now is start, or at least establish the structure of the problem, right? We know what to do with the volume. Can anyone here come up with the general structure of the volume of the rectangle prism? Yes? Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, so two. Uh, no, not that. Just a, a general oh. formula in a sense, yes? For volume? Yes. Oh, um, volume equals length times length times height. Very good. Length times width times height. And do you agree that the length times width here is the area of the base? Is that true? Yes. Length times width is the area of the base. And then we times it by the height. This actually works for any kind of prism. As long as you identify, oh yeah, it's a rectangular base. It's a triangular base. It's a circular base. All you have to do is find the area of the base first and then times it by the thickness of it. And that's the volume of any prism. It doesn't just work for one kind. Any prism will do. Area of the base times the height. This is the reason why I don't want you to say straight off length times width times height. That applies to just this particular object, rectangular prism, prism. But when you say the area of the base times height, it applies to any kind of prism. Okay? So just kind of keep that clear. But here, since we're being specific to this kind, I force you to say length times width times height. And now let's identify some of the features of, that's uh, you know being shown here. Where's the length of this thing? A, two, a. Oh, a plus five. Okay, does it matter if you call this a length? 2a minus a? So minus 2? Or a plus 5 is a length? Does it matter? No. It doesn't. Okay, so you can call either one is fine, but as long as you establish one as a length, then the other one has to be the width. So let's call this the width. The 2a minus 2 is the width, and therefore a plus 5 would be my length. And so that leaves a plus 1 as my the height. Okay, or the thickness of this object. Okay, so I have my height, I have my width, I have my length already defined. I can now use the general formula, so, so to speak, or the structure of this problem, and kind of put everything in place so that we can start simplifying this thing. Okay, so let's take a look. So we know the volume, we know the, we identify the width, the length, and the height. Let's write our entire expressions. Volume is what? 
Okay, what's the length? A plus five. A plus five. Okay, so so we're gonna write eight plus five, right? Okay. Next. Times. Times. Okay. Let me see if I'm doing this correctly. Times. The width is two a minus two. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And, and times. A plus one. Okay. Let me ask you this question. If I write it like this, would you understand what I'm doing? No. no. Oh, why would happen? Because uh, parentheses. Ah, interesting. Parentheses around. Because without the parentheses, is it true now that you would multiply five times two a, and then negative two times a, and that will change the entire problem? You're no longer finding the volume. It's not correct. Because think about this. The volume tells you to take the length times the width times the height. The length is a plus five together. That whole thing is the length, not just five, right? Is that true? So therefore, when you say that whole thing, you better enclose that whole thing inside parentheses. It's actually a very good habit anyway, that when you start substituting stuff in, put the parentheses around that to indicate that I just substituted in. Okay, so that's the length. This is the width. And this is the height. Length, width, height. Any question there? Okay, the next step, of course, will be multiplying. Is like, that's a lot to multiply, right? So therefore, we'll come back to this topic after we visit oh my gosh. our concept for today. We'll come back, don't worry. So for today's lesson, we will be learning about multiplying actually polynomial. So yesterday was just a mono times a poly. Today it's a poly times a poly, meaning multiple terms times multiple terms. Okay. Now of course if you have seen or read the book, you will see that they recommend using FOIA method, which is a, a good way to multiply. But I don't know. I mean being me, I I don't think it's uh, it's good for some people, but for the most part, I think it's, it's not as uh, organized, and I don't think it's, it's uh, a foolproof way to get the, the right solution all the time, right? So I'm going to introduce you another method, okay? And if you like this method, you can stick with it. If not, you certainly use the polar method if you want to. I don't really care. Um, but this method today, let's start. Imagine I'll have this rock. 2x plus 5. Oh, maybe something different. Negative 3x minus 6. So I have a binomial times a binomial, right? And you would say, yeah, I can certainly use four for that one. That means I'm going to first outer, inner, last, you know, that, that whole technique, right? It's like you're distributing, but you're doing it twice. First for the first term and then the, the second set. Okay? You can do that. It's not wrong. That's the FOIL method. Now, that's the FOIL method, right? So this is called a FOIL. You, you have to distribute it like four times. Okay? Or another method is called a box method. The box method is, is like what you've learned in science. You know, have you ever heard of the Punnett square? No. Mm -hmm. Well, for those of you who have heard, it's fine. But the Punnett square method, or in this sense, the box method, requires you identify the number of terms, which we have learned in the past. It's not easy to, it's not hard to identify the number of terms you have. By the way, how many terms do we have here? Two. Two. So we have a 2x and a positive 5, right? That's two terms. And this, how many terms? Two. Okay, can you, what, what do we circle? Negative 3x. Uh huh. And negative 6. So so what you do is, once you identify that, this is a binomial, so it's a two term, two terms. So that means it's a two by two. So what you need to do is create a box that is a two by two. That means what? You can just call this two rows and two columns you want to. Row, column. That's how we say it. Row and column. So when you create that box, two row and two column, two terms, two is four. So we have two, uh, we'll have four boxes total. Notice I have, this is row number one. Row number two, column one, column two, right? Two, two. Why two, two? Because on each side will be the expression, a binomial in this case. Okay, so I'll tell you what to put on here. So first, identify the dimension of your box. In this case, it's a two by two. And now all we have to do is transfer the information into the box. Here we go. First of all, we need to label a side. You can start with this. It has two boxes here that will fit the binomial here, which is 2x plus 5. We identify the two terms. All you have to do is transfer that and label the side of the box. So this is 2x, and this is positive 5. Okay. The other side, it could be on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. I don't really care. Notice that we have two spots for the next binomial also. 
This is a negative three x, and this is a negative six. You see it? You see here? I see how I transfer the two binomials into the side of the box. This is like the label of the box. Next step is to fill in inside the box. Well, to fill it in, you just have to multiply. Yes. Yes. So let's start multiplying. When you multiply, to get this first box right here, you take whatever's on the top, which is the you know the side here on top, and the side here on the left hand side. Multiply them all. What is two x times negative three x? Negative six. What? Square. Square. Don't forget. Oh, it's x times x, right? Next one. To get this box right here, you look at the top, <coughs> look at the side. So five times negative three x. Negative fifteen x. Over here, to get this box, you look on top, look inside, which becomes negative 12x. And over here, 5 times negative 6, negative 30. Now, here's the good thing about the box. If everything is in order, usually, you look diagonally, and you'll see that like terms are lined up diagonally. You see it? Right away. Mm -hmm. And so, you see that these two can be combined. Negative 12x and negative 15x can be combined to what? Negative 7 x See it? Okay, so when we write our um, complete expression, I'll be with this. Just read from left to right. Negative 6x squared. Next one is negative 27x, right? And last, negative 30. And this will be our complete trinomial in this case after you multiply. And that's how we do it. There. So maybe it's, yes? Oh, negative 30. Okay, don't worry, this is not the only example. Okay, any questions there? No. Okay, so we identify the terms, we use the, the number of terms to decide the dimensions of our box. So I'll give you another case right now. I'll do this. Are we cool? All right. Mm -hmm. So what does it involve? Involve multiplying and dividing like terms. And that's it, okay? All right, take a look at this one. We have negative two x minus three. I have 5x squared minus 4x plus 2. There it is. So, first expression. What, what is this called? Uh, it's a bi. It's just a binomial. So, right away, you say it's a binomial. That means it's two terms, right? Next expression. It's a tri, so it's a three terms. So, therefore, the dimension of our box is going to be what? It's a two by three. That means how many boxes should we see? Six total, right? Two times three is six. So how do we form a two by three box? Yes. Okay, good. You can draw any way you want, but it's either this way. Is that true? Three by two, or this way, three by two. Vertical or horizontal, as long as they have six boxes in there. And it's always going to be either a square or a rectangle, really. Can't go wrong. Because if it's a two by two, it's going to be a square, right? Yeah. If it's a, like uh, uneven two by three or four by six or whatever, it's going to be a rectangle, mm -hmm. vertical or horizontal, and the dimension, of course, just going to, uh, it's like finding the area in a sense. Any question on that? So let's use this one, the horizontal looking box. And it doesn't matter. I don't really care. But take a look. This has three slots. On the side has two slots. The three slots will fit what expression up here? That one. Of course, the three, right? Is it? That's kind of obvious, don't you think? Yeah. It's a trinomial, therefore it can fit on the, 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 the side that has three slots. It's a binomial, so it can fit on the side that has two slots. So let's write it. What do we write here? 5x squared. 5x squared. Negative 4x. Negative 4x. Very good. Notice how you also include the sign in front. That's very crucial when you do this. But of course, it's important, right? Very important. Remember I told you when you circle the term, always include the sign in front of it. And it's the same way when you write your, um, your side here, you have to include the sign as well. Over here, what do you write? Negative 2x. Negative 2x. Negative 3. That's it. Once we have that set up, we just multiply. All right, let's multiply the first one. What do we have here after we take? Negative 10x cubed. Very good. Next. 8x squared. Next. Negative 4x. Next. Okay. Next. Next. Okay. Any questions on how I got those answers in the box? Let me know, please. What do you think? Okay, and now, remember I told you, I remind you about to look diagonally? 
Because sometimes, or most of the time anyway, when you look diagonally, you'll see like terms. Watch. See that? So this, this is the reason why I like the box better, because it's already organized for you. Okay? And so if you look at that, let's finish our, our thing here. We have, first of all, starting from left to right, we have negative 10x to the third. And then the first like terms is, it's going to give, give you what? Negative 10x squared. This one? 8x, positive 8x. Last one is negative 6. And there we have it. What is this called? Polynomial of four. Of four. And what degree? Third degree. Why? The cube is the highest, right. Yeah. Remember I told you to look for the highest degree? So you need to review on that? Please do, okay? Okay. Any questions so far on that one? Is it uh, easy to swallow, I hope? Pretty much the same thing we've been doing, right? Okay. Now... I want you to go back to this problem. Oh. So can you go when, back to this? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yes. So like in the box, right? You know, so it'll always be uh, diagonal or whatever. Yes. If you if you happen to see that, it will be, always be I diagonal. You're right. Okay. If you don't see like terms, then don't force yourself. Okay. Only if you see like terms, then go ahead and combine. If you don't, just write everything out. Okay. Yes. Okay. For those of you ready, just go back to your first uh, this uh, review of prompt number six, and I want you to go ahead and multiply this. First of all, you see this is a binomial times a binomial times a binomial. Think about this stuff. If we're going to be multiplying three things together, don't you have to multiply the first two first? Then whatever you got, you multiply the last term. Same concept as if you're doing this. 2 times 5 times 6, you would do this first, and then after that you take 10 times 6 to make it 60. You can't just like do all at the same time. can't do it like that. So the same way here, I would definitely advise you to go ahead and find the product of this first. What, what kind of box do you need for the first two? Four. It's a 2 by 2. 2 by 2. Very good. So, okay, so let me just kind of kind of guide you here. It's a 2 by 2, right? What do you put on the side? Okay, A plus 5, right? What over here? Okay, then multiply. Go ahead. See what you got. So notice I'm doing the first two right now. Just the first two. Negative 2a, this? Negative 2a, this? Okay, let's write it out. And you see it in that curve? Yes, yeah. uh, Mark. When we combine the terms, we add them? Yeah. What do you think? When I say combine together, you think you're going to add, subtract, multiply, divide? What do you think? When you say combine, honestly, we just put things together, right? Whether it's negative or positive, we just put them together. If they're both, of course, the same sign we add, but if they're opposite, they're, we're subtracting, right? For example, if I actually combine this and this together, what your answer is going to be? Two. Two. Right? Is it two? Yeah. Because that's a seven, that's a negative five. When you combine them, it's a two. But if I give you this, when you combine them, what are you going to have? Negative. Yeah, there it is. That's what combining means. Okay? All right? No multiplying. Combining doesn't mean multiplying. All right. So. Do we see any like term that we can actually combine? Yes. A, negative a, a, negative 2A. So what is this going to become? 8A. Uh, so you write 2A squared plus 8A minus 10, right? So this is a new trinomial. And notice that I'm going to go and bring this down, which is A plus 1. So now, what is that new box going to look like? Like that. 3 by 2. 3 by 2. Three terms. By two terms, so three by two. So I'm going to go and set this new box up, and uh, just to demonstrate, you can actually assert, do it vertically if you want to. Fine, <laughs> three by two. Um, so 
what would you write here on the top? Negative two, I mean, two A squared. Wait, on top? You, oh, um, See, depending on the box, right? Yeah. So what do you write? A. One, a. And one. Probably. And one. Okay. And on the side? Two A squared. Two A squared. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of two A squared. Uh, eight A. Eight A. And negative ten. And negative ten. There it is. See that? All right. You do the rest. <laughs> go ahead. I hope you see a pattern. That's what I'm saying. But let's multiply oh. first to see it. If you see it. Yeah. Okay. First box, anyone? Two negative. Two A cubed. Two A cubed. Bottom. Eight A squared. Negative ten A. Very good. Okay, on the side here. Two A squared. Next. Eight A and negative ten. And once again, you see that pattern already, right? If you look diagonally, what do you know? Indeed, we do have like terms. Okay, but if, if you check diagonally and you don't see like terms, don't force yourself, okay? Just write everything out. That's okay. You don't see like terms. But now that we have this, let's finalize our answers. First of all, we have 2a to the third. Next one, what do we have? 10a squared, because they're both positive. Combine them together, it's 10a squared, right? <laughs> Hulk smash. Yes, the Hulk. <laughs> Hope smash. All right. Uh, negative 10a and 8a. Negative 2a. And of course, last one is negative 10. What is this called? Polynomial. Oh. To the? Third degree. <laughs> Third degree. There it is. That's all. Any questions? Huh? Yes. It is.